talking about the new Wild Irish Whistle and comparing it with its closest competitor, the Killarney. They share a similar design, similar price point. How do they stack up in terms of tone, playability, that kind of stuff? Let's find out. Blast away and see how this thing sounds. Well, first impressions, it sounds pretty good. It sounds very controlled. Um, I wasn't really at all concerned jumping up to that the high octave, the high B, the high G, that whole kind of phrase that I had there, felt like I was going to hit it, and I didn't have to give it a whole lot of thought. It feels heavy. It feels dense. Maybe that's a better word, dense. I'm not sure exactly why I feel that, but it just feels like it's, it's similar in design to the Killarney. There's a lot of weight up top, but it does feel a bit better balanced. Whoop. Yeah, feels like it. I'll have to compare that with the Killarney, but it doesn't feel as top heavy as I was expecting. <laughs> Strangely, it also feels like I'm gonna get a cramp in this hand because the balance is not where I'm expecting it. Don't know why, it's, it feels like it's more along the lines of where it should be relative to one of these very top heavy whistles, but it also just feels odd and maybe it's just a matter of getting used to it. Let's check tuning on this. I haven't even changed it out of the box, so let's see what we're at. We'll flat to start, but it is tunable, which is kind of the whole point. First octave seems right on the money. Slight variance off dead center, but you get that green light, you consider yourself lucky. Ooh, rather than the high D, which hopefully you don't have to use too often, it, it's, it's accurate. It's solid. I mentioned it's heavy. It seems to be brass with this black powder coating. I'm not entirely sure that's the right word for it, but it feels sturdy. It's not like I could squish this. This is, you know, it's not exactly a breakable whistle. The head joint bears a striking resemblance to the Killarney, which we're going to break down in a second, but it's got that same flush mount pin that seems to be holding one, two, three layers of the head joint together. Again, very sturdy, very well built. Looks like a professional instrument, which for the price, um, 80 some odd euro, I think, something like that, you'd expect it to be well built for that kind of money. Now, let's compare to the Killarney whistle. I'm gonna start with the wild and I'm gonna run just a basic D scale for one octave. For example one, for example two, here's the Killarney. First glance, first listen, Glance probably wouldn't be the right word. The wild feels very smooth, very soft, not weak. Don't mistake me, the volume and, and strength of the tone is, is every bit as, as solid as it is in the Killarney. The Killarney has a bit of a grit to it, which some folks probably really like, some folks don't. I also just realized as I'm looking at these two, this pin is not flush mounted. I had it in my head that it was. These are flush, these are smooth with the rest of the head joint. Slight difference there, but you can see the similarities from the design of the of the head joint probably the same size too but that powder coating makes it makes it noticeable noticeably thicker uh, and it does affect the overall weight i'm just going to compare where the the balance point on the killarney is what about there relative to the b hole whereas on this one the center of gravity is just north very similar to what it would be on the humphrey or generations or, or really most cylindrical bore whistles that and that may have been the point that may have been the reasoning behind this is to adjust that balance here's what confuses me about this whistle 
I don't really know why it exists. When the Killarney came out, it filled a need, or maybe a want is the right word for it. People wanted to buy a really nice whistle, but they didn't necessarily want to wait a year and pay hundreds of dollars for something like a John Sint. So when Killarney came out, they were able to get people something very much like a John Sint for about a hundred bucks, and they get it to you in about two weeks. And in my opinion anyway, a hundred bucks is a reasonable price to spend for a high quality instrument, which both of these definitely are. So what's with the Wild Irish Whistle then? It's about five or 10 bucks cheaper than the Killarney, has the same basic design, and that's kind of where I mean, I'm not entirely sure why it exists. If they'd managed to sell it for half the price or somehow drastically improve the tone, make it out of carbon fiber or something, you know, then I could understand it. But this feels like a copy of a copy, albeit a very good one, flawless in fact, but you know, kind of an unnecessary one. Because this is the original, this is the John Sent, and there's been a few that are trying to, to get to this. And I would say Killarney's done a fine job in that they can make these fairly quickly and get them out to you. And I would say the Wild is a great whistle as well. Just not sure why we need both. That's my take. Curious what you guys think. Has anybody else tried these? What do you think of the sound, the comparison between the two? Let me know. I, I'd be curious what your, what your take is down below, and I'll see you all in the next one, guys.